Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. My name is Twitchy and this is my final career mode. Squad have said no more updates, so this is the perfect time before KSP2 releases to play KSP1 for the final time. In previous episodes, we managed to take ourselves to the suborbital and even up to orbit with the power of controlled explosions. The Gerbils having a time of their lives, also making flight with the power of a fixed wing and forced air burning through the Juno jet engine. We have also unlocked access to the Scansat part. Scansat is the only parts mod that I have on this entire playthrough, and it is the one that gives us access to things like altimetry data and maps of the planets that we're trying to look at. Unlocking the parts gave us access to the contracts to scan Kerbin. The catch is you need to launch a satellite or spacecraft around the planet that you want to scan and that takes a lot of power. I've launched a couple of missions by battery power only and taking a look at the maps here you can see that it has not been very effective at all. Just a smattering of pixels across the screen. And so it must follow that our first objective is to try and get solar power Panels. We are an agonizingly few short number of science points to get those solar panels, so let's put a mission together very quickly to go find. The other discovery of note is whilst on a test flight for my terrible plane, which as a small aside, given its performance in this episode, we really need to upgrade, we managed to discover an alternative launch site. This launch site was called Cove Launch Site, and we managed to leave Bob Kerman there, our scientist. He went out on the test flight of our last terrible plane, and uh, as he came in for a landing, managed to smash up one of the landing gears. So we're going to put together a new vehicle for him here. I went over to that particular bay looking for some science, but we did not find the science that we were looking for. Indeed, it had some properties assigned to it that I was not quite expecting. So we're putting this other vehicle together so that we can go around and try and see what was up with that. Jebediah Kerman, one of the few times we actually allow him to get out. It's okay, he's just dropping off the vehicle. He's going to come over and take the broken arrow, the plane that we have got over here. I mean, it's the, the plane is called the arrow. It's currently broken. Jebediah is going to take it away from Bob Kerman here, but with his rather fetching blue frosting to his hair. I, I really do like Bob look, Bob's look that's going on here. We're going to rub Bob to the other vehicle, but I've got an idea. I want to know, uh, using the vehicle that Jebediah is currently in, what science I actually get from the landing platform here. Uh, I know from the shore, over there that we get some grassland science and this this was that that's what just popped up there grassland science from the beach was was not what I was expecting when I came to this uh, this little bay here I was really hoping for some shore science I know we could have got it just from the uh, from the very beaches of the Kerbal Space Center itself but that that's not the way that we play the game around here we go for grand adventures anyway having a look at the uh, crew report that Jebediah managed to get from the launch pad there Cove launch site is its own separate science biome. So I'm just going to go out and grab everything that we can from him. We got ourselves a whopping 20 points of science from that particular outing. Not amazing, not terrible. Let's think about it. It's roughly half of your level two tech. So that, that, that's pretty cool. Jeb got himself a few ribbons. I'm not overly chuffed about that, but you know, he did deliver the cargo. So I suppose that's all fine. Bob Kerman here having to make sure that we've got some of the conditions of some of our past contracts met. All we had to do was test a tiny decoupler on the launch pad, managed to do that, and now I'm off on a little bit of an adventure. I remember how I was saying the beach back there gave us grassland science. Well, let's try and find ourselves where the shores is out here. It's got to be somewhere in this bay, uh, out over the water. If, if that's grassland and that's ocean ahead of us, in between should be the shores somewhere. So we jet boat car our way out to the water, and at some sort of arbitrary point, I stop and see if we've got uh, some shores science and indeed at this point we did get shore science so I go and make my way over to the water's edge I'm not entirely sure what would happen if we were to just stop in the middle of the water here I, we'd just float around I, I do know what would happen but I wanted to be able to get Bob Kerman out and I didn't want any danger of the butt of the vehicle floating off without me so we went and beached ourselves to do all of the sciences and probably got ourselves about 20 points of science there as well but the adventure does not stop there no we came out here to also look and see if we like any alternate launch sites. I am looking around to see if we can see the next bay. Uh, also 
comparing back to the Kerbal Space Center and seeing if we can see the buildings there. Yes, we could, so we could see at least as far ahead of us. There didn't appear to be any buildings in this bay, but I'm going to go and explore anyway. I see a little bit of a cove up ahead, a nice little beach that we can get onto. This should be a fine. It's a nice, easy slope to make our way up and out, and as long as I'm not exceeding the strength of our wheels, it will be fine. The thing with Kerbin's water is that it's nice and flat. And the thing with Kerbin's land is that it's not. So we can't start off quite well, but the fun moment, the moment we find a bounce, the vehicle throws itself over and we're in big trouble, big explosions. Uh, so I meet the conditions of the, the contract all over again. Welcome to the revert, same day, same craft. <laughs> we are gonna quickly do the things again. We're gonna move forward. We gotta find ourselves the shore science and we're gonna call that one a good one because we're not going to go and explore the thing that we already know is empty again. But there we go. That's the uh, the science card. Didn't it do well? Also got an extra four points from having Bob on board there. 24 science points earned as opposed to the 20 that Jebediah got for the exact same set of experiments. Coming into the research and development, we're not going to muck around. We're not going to even talk about it too much. We're just going to outright buy ourselves some solar panel. And that means we can come over to the VAB and start working on a vehicle here. We have taken the third of sciences. This is the vehicle that we used to take up into orbit to go and get all our science materials but you know what we don't want any of that on there now it is just extra weight we want to have the scan sat equipment on there and the scan sat equipment on there only uh, you can see that this craft has got quite an excessive amount of solid boosters i don't know why i've been a obsessed with the past couple of uh, launches of putting solid boosters on there but also Jeb, Jeb get out of there you are not, one. see you let him in one craft and suddenly he's in the, the hot seat for all of them, I didn't ask for him to go there we want Bill flying this so with the correct Kerbal in the hot seat, we are back at Woomerang launch site. Once again, it is further up from the equator, so it's angular velocity. Well, no, it's angular velocity is the same, but its uh, linear velocity is less than at the equator. We are traveling less sideways when we are further up north, so we don't have to go fight so hard to go into a polar orbit. And polar orbit is where we want to go if we want to get a complete scan of all the planet. And that is what we want to do. Scanning is the name of this contract after all. What happens is we rot uh, as we go around our orbit, the planet rotates underneath us. Our orbit stays where it is, but the planet rotates, meaning that we can see every single bit of the planet as it rotates underneath us, as long as we don't end up in a few very specific conditions. Not that I would ever, doesn't sound like anything I would do at all. Having used our solid boosters to get up top, we are also using our last solid booster to start circularizing, using the very, very last bit of liquid fuel that we have at the end there to make sure we have a very very nice orbit and for the first time in a little while we have actually some numbers for our orbit at the very top of the screen this is brought to you by the Kerbal Engineer mod and the fact that we have a Kerbal Engineer in the pilot seat we now need to wait for a long time uh, we're mapping a small bit of Kerbin with each pass and we need to get to 75% coverage now we could just time accelerate into the future until the spacecraft has gone around the planet enough times to get a complete planet sweep but we do not run our Kerbal space program that way no we have science to be gathered and we have money to get so we can upgrade our buildings to that end we are working on the arrow we're going to try and strap some rockets underneath it we're going to go see if we can go i don't know let's pick the north pole as one of the most awkward places to get to in the name of all that powers us out of gravity wells jeb stop getting in the pilot seat Small clerical errors aside, Valentina is going to try and get us into a nice orbit here. We're going to fly up and go at about a 45 degrees. I feel like this is the best angle to get us going forwards enough because we are a plane, but also high enough that we can take advantage of the fact that we have a rocket underneath us. I've got to level with you. When I put the solid booster on the underside of this plane, I was like, great, the plane's light. We should get quite a fair bit of distance out of it. No, 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 no we don't. We, we got to just the, the edge of the mountain range from which Woomerang is based in. That's not too bad, but it's not quite what I was expecting when we put it up there. So uh, this means we've got a long, long plane journey ahead of us. I'm going to perform a little bit of a magic trick. Right now on the map, we're down low and poof, we're up high. Look at that. Beautiful. Wasn't that amazing? Amazing. Opening up the contract window in the top right, you can see that we have covered a massive 2%. I realize at this point that maybe going on a small little jaunt up to the North Pole might not actually be a long enough uh, waste of time. Use of time? 
time eating device for us. So it's going to take multiple, multiple orbits for the scan sat to be done. I, I kind of knew this in the back of my head, but I was also kind of hoping that the North Pole was far enough away that it would take up a bit of time. Let's uh, let's observe the form that is the Arrow Plus at the moment. This craft is amazingly good if you put a non-pilot inside it. It has enough of the aerodynamic drag at the back that it will flow no matter what, but the landings, oh my gosh, the landings. The parachute is not well balanced, and when you do actually come down and try and land on the landing gear, the, uh, it's just, it, we'll see, we'll see later. Currently lamenting the fact that we've left Bob Kerman at home, we could have been getting ourselves a much bigger bonus for all the science that we are collecting, the entire science suite picked up by Valentina here. That's 20 points of concentrated science juice for us, that's looking pretty good. Let's go back and check in with Bill Kerman, the first scan sat satellite up here. Uh, he seems to be doing okay. The first thing I note though, we do not have our solar panel pointed directly at the sun over there. Uh, I'm going to call it Kerbal. A lot of people do, a lot of people don't. It is mentioned in-game as the sun, but in community there are a lot of people that know it as Kerbal, as ours is soul. It, it's just the way that things have evolved. And there is actually a bit of science out on Elu that also refers to it as Kerbal, but I've got a feeling that was added in outside of a uh, game design regulations. But the scan sat maps are what we're here to check. We seem to be doing well. We have a line going all the way around the planet and I've um, conveniently ignored a red flag here, which we are going to continue ignoring. Word has come from up on high that we need to do a government mandated PR mission. Jebediah has not spent enough time out and on the screen and we think we know what we're going to do for him. We've got to grab ourselves a nice low stakes mission over by the south edge of the mountains, very, very close to the Kerbal Space Center. You can see on the map there, though I only flashed it up for half a second. We're like, Jebediah, you need to go and show our wonderful, wonderful new technology off. So if you could please take the Arrow Plus and run as fast as you can towards those mountains. Go and get the temperature scan that we need and show them the power of this machine. Nothing has seen anything as fast or as big as this on a Kerbin before. I know we as players have seen much better technologies, but this this is this is absolute cutting edge stuff and Jebediah is the man to fly it out there. But it is a plane mission. It's going to take a little bit of a while to get over. You can see the mountains on the right there and boom they can see that they are very very close all of a sudden <laughs> small miracles of time manipulation aside Jeb has a mission to do while he's out here and it is literally just to grab himself a temperature survey but whilst I am flying over the grasslands in Kerbin I thought I might take an opportunity to take a small moment to go through and check all the different sciences we have and see what actually makes a difference to be flying over the grasslands most of the science experiments in here can be done via flying but some of them are sensitive to what biome you're over. Some of them are just going, hey, you're flying. That's the same no matter which way for me. This is a bit of an important landing for Jebediah here. We've got the Associated Presses that sat on the edge of the runway watching how this plane can perform and it is really all down to Mr. Kerman to perform a particularly a wonderful and spot on a landing. We can see he's coming a little bit off of the center line but corrective measures are happening. He seems to be touching down wonderful. Oh, what was... What was that? Suddenly we're upside down. Jeb, Jeb, what did you do? Well, despite the scuff landing, Jebediah did actually meet all mission objectives, meaning that we can actually buy ourselves the next piece of technology and throw a small celebration in honor of Jebediah Kerman. Yay. Isn't he great? It's time for some base hunting. We are launching here from the desert airfield. That's because I want to travel just a little bit north. There is that mountain range just there, just above it, that I want to go and check out. I believe that there is an Easter egg there. It's been many, many years since I've been there, but I have actually been there myself, so I know it definitely exists somewhere either around that mountain range or another mountain range very, very similar to it. Whilst we're taking our flight over the desert here, I would like to take the moment to thank every single one of my patrons. These are the guys and gals that mean on a hot day like today, I will sit down here and put in the work necessary to get this video out. If you would like to join in the collective guilt trip that is the pressure to keep me producing these videos, do feel free to follow the link down below and join in. 
Whilst we're coming out of the desert, I want you to take note of this cove over here. A glade, uh, alcove, I don't know what to call it, but that one over there. Just remember that it exists. So we have come out of the desert and we are coming around the mountain range. My basic plan here is just to uh, fly around the outside. I, I remember that it was on a plateau on the floor. There was a big like hollow taken out and there was a weird K shape inside and buildings were inside there. This is what I'm looking for, so I'm gonna start flying around. My, my big hope is it's just around this, this corner right here. Uh, there's a big mountain right there. How could it not be located just around the hill ahead of us? But actually, I can now see around that hill ahead of us. And no, there's there's nothing there. Uh, and I can see around the next ridge line, And there's nothing there as well. So I think we're going to go flying over the middle of the mountains. As we can see over both ridge lines. let's go and do a little bit of exciting stuff. The Junos, they do not have a very high ceiling to them. Uh, many times I've been trying to fly over the mountains behind the KSC and we have hit a Juno limit of the mountains are taller than the Juno can actually fly and a few times I've managed to have to land on the mountains or crash and die trying. I'm a little bit worried that I'm going to have to do the same here. In fact I even flick my landing gear on and off forgetting that these are fixed landing gear and uh, don't need to be folded or taken back out. Here it's looking a little bit dangerous but actually I feel like I have quite a bit of power. At no point have I been slowing down in in my flight. Sometimes that's when I uh, realize that we are in a quite serious trouble. We are flying upwards, but actually we're slowing down in how fast we're flying upwards, and that's not great. Flying over this final ridge, I'm noticing that actually the uh, the, the Easter egg that I'm looking for is, is not located here. It's not located here at all, and I didn't see any other hollows around the mountains to be that it could be located in. And at this point, my suspicions are high. I I think we're going to go all the way around. And indeed, coming over this last ridge here, take a look at the desert, take a look at the hills. Remember that, that little alcove that I told you to remember? The plateau? Yeah, I, I think this is the one. I really do think those are the same. Anyway, I've done a quick save because I have flown Twitchy Airways before. Uh, Valentina coming in for a landing. I didn't see any yellow text. Oh, 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 oh it's really... It's really not a great plane, guys. I got this totally the plane. It's not not the pilot. It's, uh, it's but anyway. Eventually, we got to somewhere where I felt like we could deal with the landing that actually happened. Valentina coming in a nice and slow. Uh, I've given up on trying to land at this point. Every time that I land, uh, the landing gears just completely destroy themselves. But only taking out one engine. I will take that. I will turn the engine off on the other side and I will take that uh, up very slightly unequal mass. So what is this wonderful place I found, so you might ask? Well, this is by Kerbanor, sometimes called the Inland Kerbal Space Center, and I know it as the KSC2. It's an Easter egg that holds on to the old assets from uh, way, way back, so Kerbal 0.2 or something like that. The VAB, the launch towers, and the tracking station look, used to look very different. In fact, they used to look just like these guys. But the big takeaway from that was no new launch site. I didn't see any yellow writing at any point during this. That's a little bit sad. Quick check in with Bill Kerman. Everything seems to be going fine. He's got power. He's got all, all the things he needs to survive as the functional immortal that he actually is. Though I have now taken the moment to look at the scan map and realize that our orbital path keeps overlapping itself. This is quite bad. We, this means we're never going to actually get the whole of the map. We're always going to end up with little gaps in between. So I'm going to go ahead and raise one side of our orbit up so that we can uh, disrupt that pattern. Whilst we're waiting for that new pattern to sell into place, let's do something uh, quite fun. We're going to skip over Bob's journey here. We're taking him up to the North Pole. Indeed, we are trying to get him as close to the North Pole as possible. Uh, I end up destroying the, the, the plane. I mean, is anybody surprised? I don't think anybody's surprised. And I spend a long time trekking Bob Kerman towards the North Pole. All I do is follow the North. It's nice and easy. When getting as close enough that the map starts spinning around, I'm like, great, this is what I'm looking for. What is this? What What even is going on here? Bob looks like he's taking a nice lie down, but he's really not. He's trying to walk around as well. Placing a flag. Where did it go? I, I don't know. Oh, of, of course, floating 200 meters in the air next to my spaceship. Uh, yeah, yeah, why not? After launching a mission that I'm going to spend all of next week telling you about, we found a contract in the mission control. That's right, the ScanSat contract has been completed, and so the return of Bill Kerman is underway. The first thing I noticed turning to the map is, of course, look how close the Kerbal Space Center is. I feel like we can bring Bill back home, like literally back home. We're going to try our best to anyway. There is, of course, the ever-present 
present issue of the rotation of Kerbin. I'm wondering how long it's going to take me to get over there, how fast the Kerbin's going to rotate. I end up trying to aim a little bit closer to the Kerbal Space Center. I realize very quickly that actually this is not the way to do it. Time warp my way into the future and spend what little fuel I have trying to course correct so that we can land a little bit closer to the KSC. But before we can even see how well we did, we are in the atmosphere. The friction on the atmosphere is causing plasma to sweep past our craft. We have no connection with the ground. Bill is on his own and he is loving it like a madman. Look at him there. We have already lost enough orbital velocity that we are not going back to space today and a beautiful shot of the moon there. The heat is quite intensive but most of our materials are making it through. In fact every single one of our materials is making it through. A little bit dark so I took advantage of the game setting to bring up the ambient boost there so we can see what is going on. As we settle down into the most boring bit of the mission waiting for the parachute to bring us to the ground I would like to thank each and every one of you for coming along with me for this journey. I will see you guys next time where we are going to the moon without any flight planning. But I'll see you then when we're going to do that. Bye.